our next guest has just put out a, a wonderful, I guess we call it a coffee table book, mm -hmm. and that's not meant by any means as a slight, because it's wonderful reading that you could just stop the action at your next dinner party with. It's called Photo Diary by Lynn Goldsmith, and it's a wonderful collection of, in this case, musicians that she's, she's photographed over the years. Please welcome Lynn Goldsmith. How are you, Lynn? Fine. I want to call you a pure nice photographer, but you do a lot of other things as well. You can just call me pure, yes. Is pure is good? <laughs> yes, I've always done numerous things, but photography has been uh, the way that I express myself. It was looking at the bulk of my work. I always resented being called a rock and roll photographer mm -hmm. 10, 15 years ago, but as I got older, it became a little more appealing, and I was willing to admit that I had taken a well, lot of pictures of musicians. You're very good at it. And one of the lines in the book, which I thought was apt, was you said that the, the camera is a passport of sorts. Yes, it is. Tell it's me about some of the access that you got through your lens. Well, it's not really the access. It's a reason to be there. Mm -hmm. In other words, if right. you have a camera, there's a purpose. And I always feel like I need a purpose. I saw a shrink about that, but I still feel like I need a purpose. And you say you don't take pictures, you make pictures. Yeah, I do. How important is the subject uh, as far as working with you? Because you have some great stories in here about Miles Davis and Ringo Starr that uh, kind of work against you in many ways. Well, I think any photographer who works with people, and especially if they're musicians who aren't really individuals that do what it is that they do in order to be photographed, they do it to make music. Mm -hmm. So you have to learn about how to make somebody feel really comfortable and what it is that their uh, fan base or other people want to see in them, mm -hmm. you know, and to help bring that out. So we just saw people. that Miles Davis picture, yeah. and you tell the story about getting him to that moment where you got the shot. But in addition to that, look at that beautiful background you have. Well, that background looks beautiful to you, but to me, <laughs> <laughs> what transpired was when I arrived at Miles' house, which is, um, at the time was in Malibu, he told me that he wanted to be photographed down at the beach, and there is beach down below if we were to pull back further. But uh, the beach is quite a, a haul down, and I had my assistants move everything down there. And then, of course, <laughs> Miles said to me, where are we shooting? So I said, well, we're shooting down at the beach like you wanted to. I never said that. I don't want to shoot down at the beach. So we had to bring everything um, back up. So when I look at that shot, it doesn't look like a beach to me. It looks like a nightmare. <laughs> to me, it's, it's so beautiful. Oh, yeah. And then, of course, Springsteen. Yes. Some shots in that book of Springsteen, I think, really capture what I think of as his animal magnetism. What did you have going for you there, Lynn, that you were able to catch? Like, this one in particular really got me. How were you able to get Bruce? Well, actually, when you pull back on that shot in the book, you see that Bruce is sitting on a, you know, an unmade bed mattress, mm -hmm. which was up in the attic of the house. And um, really, I just look for locations that I think are about what that person is about. But do you use your sex appeal in these situations like that? Oh, so you're suggesting I have I sex think you're appeal? very appealing, um, but, I mean, how does a woman <laughs> use, you know, her sex appeal? I mean, it's got to be a tool of sorts. Um, well, I think that each of us brings something to the table. And in my case, first of all, being female has a certain effect. And then whether I'm fat, thin, white, black, Jewish, whatever it is that I am, is going to have an effect on people. So I think that when I'm shooting, what I've always heard back from people who I'm working with is, I'm very much into what I'm doing, and in the chapter Better Than Sex, I explain really why I've stuck with photography, because when I'm working, I tend to go like, yeah, yeah, I can't even make the sounds that I make <laughs> unless I'm doing it. <laughs> and I think that that elicits a certain mm -hmm. response okay. from people. Sure. Uh, the Tom Jones uh, photograph I thought was interesting and the story behind it. Uh, you said that Elvis hung out with Tom Jones? Yeah, that I didn't was... I know that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, well, he was kind of known for that, but if you ever get to spend time with Tom Jones, which you could because you have this TV show, okay? <laughs> yeah. You get him on and you get all kinds of great Elvis stories. Nope. My biggest problem is that sometimes I can't remember all the things that I really want to share with people. In Photo Diary, one of the great things about writing the book was really forcing myself to sit down and remember certain things that happened because I knew that, first of all, I learn, I'm always learning. And one of the reasons that I have always been um, focused on musicians is because that's my connection to love. And it has always uh, taught me about what's real. So in my, uh, in my relationships with people, whether it's a professional relationship or a friendship, I've learned, particularly from people who, by their profession of music, 
are forced to deal with the visceral, with the emotional level. Well, music is such an emotional thing. It reminds you of good times, bad times, first dates, you know, mm -hmm. first loves. There's so many things that tie into that, and it truly is the international language. Carly Simon and you have a very close relationship. Let's talk about that. Well, I met Carly uh, before she was ever a recording artist, and um, that's how we became friends. Actually, I had a job at Electra Records when she brought her uh, demo there, and uh, everybody, we used to vote on who would, you know, who got a record deal, and uh, everybody turned Carly down. I abstained from voting because I knew her, but Jack Holzman, the uh, president of Electra, said, nope, we're taking her. So. And on it went. Yeah. And you're, you're uh, the godmother of, of the children? Yes, I am. I love children. If anyone else needs a godmother out there. <laughs> so you've, you've related uh, with those, uh, those folks quite often, and, and you know James quite well. Yeah, I actually, uh, the odd part about it is that James, uh, uh, yes, James was dating my sister before he married Carly. Really? So I know James pretty well. <laughs> and I love your, what is your line in the book about James? So he dated my sister. He dated my sister, he married my friend, and he borrowed my favorite book and never, never returned, returned it. Which I <laughs> hope if you're listening, James, wherever you are, because you the black return dog, on the show. I would give love me to my book you know, You've back. gotten a sense of some of Lynn's pictures and also your personality. I mean, the, the, uh, the narrative is very, very uh, real. I mean, I hear that voice in this book as well. It's not just pictures, it's no, wonderful no. stories as well. Here is Lynn Goldsmith.